Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and I'm happy to announce that we're, we're reporting live from the Milken Institute Global Conference 2023. So pumped and excited to have Cheryl Evans on the line today, who is a director over at Milken Institute. And we're going to be talking about a new program that they're rolling out, which is called Lifetime Financial Security Program. First off, Cheryl, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Adam, for having me. I'm excited to be here. It's a pleasure. And I've watched some of your podcasts. Excellent work. So excited to talk about this important topic. Well, I'm excited to get into Lifetime Financial Security Program and really this rollout. It's a big deal. I know there's a lot of different pillars, a lot of facets to it, and we're going to get into the weeds about this. I also want to know how you got involved with Milken, your your origin story, if you will, on the Milken Institute. But before we get into all that, um, we're going to start this episode the way that we start them all. I think you may have seen the, the show before and you know the drill. So we'll start with our Mission Matters Minute. So Cheryl, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Cheryl, what mission matters to you? My mission at this time, particularly here at Milken, and and it's kind of become my larger mission in thinking about how I want to top off my career, is focusing on lifetime financial security. And, And that notion encompasses many different things. It applies to all Americans across the U.S., so we can be impactful in that space. And we're really thinking about the factors that impede large portions of the U.S. population from being financially secure throughout the course of their life and possibly insecure in retirement. So I'm excited to do that work. We're, we're going to be highlighting different topic areas, ways that people can build their own financial muscle to learn more about finance, do things like start engaging at an early age with finance and investing at an earlier age, and then look at some of the policy and inequities and things that we need to change to help people be financially secure throughout their lives, which really is the American dream. And that also ties into Milken's building MCAD Center for Advancing the American Dream. And that's everyone's dream to be financially secure and live the life that they choose. So that's what we're aiming to do through advocacy, research, and speaking with experts and then educating. So that's my mission now. It's great. And and love we love supporting that mission over at Mission Matters. And one of my goals in coming to the conference and covering the conference is that I know that, you know, not all of our audience out there, maybe not everybody's seen Milken or, or knows what it's about, yeah. the global conference. So maybe let's start with like your origin story. Like, like how did you discover the Milken conference? Um, well, I discovered Milken and started working here last year. So it's, it's my one year anniversary. And I came last Congrats, year. Congrats. Yes, yeah, it is. I started uh, at last year's global conference conference a month before. So I was thrown into, it was, it was limited a little more than to retirement. Um, I'm a securities lawyer by training. So I worked at the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission for 11 or 12 years. I've done other work in the finance space, uh, worked at CFA Institute, the Global Association of Investment Professionals, dealing with content, the future of finance. I worked at, and then on the business side, I worked at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce for six years. So I've been in that sort of space of capital markets, business, et cetera. And when I was looking to leave CFA Institute, I had known of Milken for years. Yeah. Um, having, I knew they had a, a finance center, Center for Financial Markets, which now is now called MI Finance. And I knew some people who had worked there. The head mm-hmm. of the Inter- Office of International Affairs, uh, Paul Leder, was a senior fellow. And I had always looked at, at positions there that I would see occasionally and saw this opening that fit quite nicely with my background. In addition to being an attorney, I've done some training and am certified in life coaching, wellness coaching. So focused on transitions. So it seemed like a great fit for me because I'm interested in the psychological part. And then the, I know finance and I wanted to do something impactful that was going to make a difference. And that's what Milk is all about. You know, we have the three pillars of finance, health and philanthropy, and then we go beyond that. But so I'm excited to be here. And so that was really why I wanted to do something impactful and be at a think tank. So mm. Yeah. It's wonderful. And a um, lot of different, so obviously a lot of different things that you could have done with, with your tenure and your career, and especially when yeah. you're at your stage in your career, a lot of experience. I see Milken overall as the brand and the platform and all the good they're doing. And yeah. now when you think about the rollout of this program, let's maybe get a little bit, a little bit further there. Like what attracted you to this program? What attracted me to the program, I think it was a nice fit with my background and my knowledge. So I I know finance well. I sort of know the private wealth space. I worked a bit in that at at CFA Institute. One of the things I did there was help lead a global policy initiative, thinking about finance and also the mission of uh, MI Finance 
part of it is harnessing finance as a force for good. Mm-hmm. So that was a big attraction for me, wanting to do something that was solely in the impact space uh, towards the end of my career. CF Institute did similar mm-hmm. work, but this is really squarely in making a difference, bringing together disparate uh, people who may not be in the mm-hmm. same room and and people want to hear from Milken, which is also great. Yeah. Um, so that's the main sort of big picture, you know, reason why I wanted to join. And, and I'm excited to be here. And, and the Global Conference is amazing yeah. for anyone who hasn't uh, been to it. So a lot of different topics, over 840 speakers. Oh my gosh, 840. Oh. Yeah, uh, 835, oh, 840. I don't know. A it's, it's a lot. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and a lot of topics. Mm-hmm. And so I, I noticed some, some, some of my background for, especially for my longtime listeners and people that have been watching. So I, I come from a finance background and I, I thought it was interesting the, the, the way that the phrase has changed. So when you said it maybe started with something like retirement, and now when we think yeah. about lifetime financial security, like that, everything, all of that nuance, it encompasses so much more. Is that a broadened scope or maybe can you let us know? Yes, we, we did broaden it out. We were thinking of retirement security and actually we've we've held an event in October and we've also been consulting mm-hmm. with experts. And one expert had said to us and several mm-hmm. have, we should retire the term retirement. A oh, lot of yeah. younger people, it doesn't <laughs> resonate with them. And then also many people are not going to probably officially retire in the sense where you yeah. work somewhere and get a pension and, and quit working. People will transition mm-hmm. to some other role. And then we also were thinking, where can milk and be impactful? Mm-hmm. And it's it's a lot of people are in the retirement space, right? Yep. Financial firms and, and experts, great experts that I could list, mm-hmm. Alicia Munnell and various others, Teresa Willarducci. But we thought that people really need to be financially secure at all stages of their lives. Mm-hmm. And they're not always doing that. And a big factor that we wanted to focus on is getting people to invest at a young age, mm-hmm. starting at, at least at, at 25. And I know when I was 25, I was still starting out as a lawyer, but I was not thinking of investing. Mm-hmm. But the power of compounding can get you a lot of money, as you know, Adam, I'm quite sure, um, over 40 years. So we really wanted to really focus on getting people to invest early and being secure at, at all stages of their life so that they can live the life they want, not just at the end of their life, because you don't know when mm-hmm. that's going to be and you don't know what retirement will look like for you. So we wanted to encompass that whole spectrum. Yeah. And when I saw that in the broad and scope, I think about it and I think about the even the idea of retirement let's retire retirement, that yes. word, right? Because what it comes down to is some of those, in my opinion, some of the values that we had with that term in the past, like we're living longer. Many of us are fortunate too, where we have a different quality of living. There's, we're a lot more accessible. I mean, yeah. some of the individuals, the third, the fourth, the fifth acts, I mean, I've seen right. people doing, and it's not always, it doesn't have to always necessarily be like money centric, like it may be philanthropy, it may be a lot of different things. But the idea that we're going to, you know, just kind of retire to the golf course, or whatever we're going to do at the end, just we have so many years and so much more that we can give back, in my opinion. And so I see this, that kind of that next stage of of rebranding it so that it's financial security. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and we're thinking also about longer work lives, which is one mm-hmm. of the topics when we delve in it, the need to work longer. We know we have an aging population, baby boomers, uh, you know, coming to the mm-hmm. fore. And, and we, so we have people living longer and then we have an aging population. We also had COVID and we started thinking in terms mm-hmm. of now may be a good time to spur action because a lot of people were pulling back saying, am I financially secure? Am I going to mm-hmm. keep my job? Right. So so that's a factor as well. So it was a good time to sort of pull those three things together, maybe mm-hmm. capture people's attention and thinking about their own financial security, because sometimes people have a hard time thinking about it, particularly if they're struggling financially, they mm-hmm. think I can't save for the future. So we want to encourage people to do that. Yeah. What are some of the uh, initiatives or the ways that um, that, you, that you're planning on or working on the conversations of kind of reaching the different populations like with this content, whether it's age, whether it's maybe underserved communities that just in general, how are you kind of going about that? Yes. I mean, we, um, uh, have a paper that that's called Shifting the Retirement Paradigm, uh, move, Moving Towards Lifetime Financial Security. That will be released in about six weeks, but the executive summary is online now. Um, and it's about seven pages. The paper is 50 or 60 pages. So I know that not everyone's going to read that long piece. But within that piece, um, it, it covers some of the things that we're going to focus on. And so we'll be focusing on things like the obvious one I said, getting mm-hmm. people to invest at a young age, understanding the power of compounding. One of the other factors is getting people to look at their social security early on. We don't want people living mm-hmm. on social security. The average amount, just the average that people get, many people get more but and less, is 1827 mm-hmm. a month in 2023. You And we see some older people living yeah. on that. And that's a struggle. So we want people to look at that and think in terms of streams of income. So we'll also be focusing on 
inequities, uh, racial inequities, uh, gender inequity, and I can you know give you some stats yeah. on those things. And then focusing on longer working lives, uh, to, to your point that you just made, people are going to want and need to live longer and frankly have a lot to contribute o- over time. So multi-generational workforces and then upskilling, people getting, getting people to train. Mm. So I'll just add one more thing is that we have coined a term that you, we want people to focus on their career longevity plan, which is mm. a new term uh, that we're just thinking about. In other words, don't presume you're going to be able to stay in your job till 67. St- statistics show that you will probably be pushed out or maybe you can't do it physically or you have caregiving responsibilities. So we want people to upskill and train. So those are some of the things we're doing as to the way we do it. We convene people, we put out research papers, speak with the media, have advocacy campaigns. And we did something like we commented on the Secure 2.0 Act that was just passed, Mm -hmm. which was helping enhance the retirement plans. So we do all of those things as a think tank, a lot of different sort of tools in our tool chest to, to highlight issues. Fantastic. Yeah. And so Cheryl, putting you on the spot here for this one, okay. at Milken 2023 uh, conference, what's been one of your favorite, I know there's still some more conference there's left, more but, yeah. but so far, what's been some of your favorite moments? You know, I'm excited for my own session, which is yeah. FinTech and Innovative Solutions. We have four different speakers, but that's coming up tomorrow. So that's not happened yet. I was very moved by the Mosepi prize mm-hmm. that Emily Church, Musil Church runs um, it was three or four years in the making. Last night, we announced the winners. It was in Agritech. We had people mm. from uh, Southern Africa compete. We had 3,500 submissions. Wow. We, went, we gave them, uh, we, we picked 25, gave them uh, amounts of money at maybe 50,000. Uh, that, that may be wrong, but uh, mm. about that. We had, down, we had the five finalists here from Africa. Wow. They got 100,000, the, the top, uh, bottom two, but they're all great. <laughs> and then 150, 350, and a million dollar prize. And so- solving those kind of world problems. That's a philanthropy piece, but that was very inspirational mm. to me. Um, there was a great talk on AI yesterday. Ashton Kutcher was a part of it, mm. remarkably knowledgeable in that space. Yeah. And then I liked Frank Luntz's town hall where we talked about a divided America and it was interactive. We had experts with the mayor of Miami. We had other people, Nick Mulvaney, and then we had people in the audience speaking about how can we get things done at the state and federal level when people mm. are so divided and, and divisive in their in their dialogue. So these were all very different topics, but mm. that's kind of what Milken does well, mm-hmm. brings together a lot of different topics in the health, philanthropy, mm. uh, finance space. But then we go beyond that, you know, into other kind of, we have sports and other things, but those are ones that stood out for me so far. Ah, it's great. Yeah. And so, as I mentioned before, you know, one of the things that my goal of being here is to get, you know, our audience, I want everybody to know about the Milken Conference and also the great work that is happening here and all, all the things that are going on. If people want to kind of follow up and learn more about, you know, Milken, how do you, how, how do you think people, the best way for people to get involved? I think the first way, the entry point is really to go to milken.org, our website, mm-hmm. and it's broken down by centers. I work in the Center for Financial Markets, which is essentially rebranded as uh, MI Finance, but it'll say mm-hmm. both. And if you're interested in this particular program, you can you know, look for the papers on the cover page right now. Uh, shifting the you know the retirement paradigm and uh, moving towards lifetime financial security. So I would do that. We in finance, we have other interesting topics. Uh, climate resilient infrastructure, inclusive capitalism, fintech, crypto, those those yeah. things as well. We help with developing countries. We bring in scholars from other securities areas. So there's a lot to see on the website. And if you want to sort of look and see what we're doing in the, the health space, aging, philanthropy, I would go there. And then if you're interested, there's often ways to engage and, and, and say you want to be a part of something or if you want to join a dialogue that we're mm. having and say, I'm an expert. Yeah. I'd like to you know, work with you. That's, mm-hmm. that's a possibility as well. Yeah. So. And I understand also on the website, I mean, there's a ton of content yes. like from previous. I mean, even, even on YouTube, I noticed that there's like, there's so many, I think there's over, I looked last night over 2000 videos. There's on research YouTube. papers and then there's, there's snippets from private sessions. Yeah. We hold over 300 events a year and we do them in EMEA. We do them in and there's a Singapore one, but it's related. You know, mm-hmm. we do them in other locations, Washington, uh, New York, um, London. So we have events and then we have our research pieces that are mm-hmm. up there. And then we have smaller convenings. So we do do a lot of different things. But if there's a topic that you're interested in, you can mm-hmm. engage. And we, we often say that we welcome experts, you know, reaching out with us to us to participate in our dialogues. Because that's what we do well, bring people together to try to talk about And think about solving the important issues. And I will say one other thing. We added gun violence to our repertoire Mm. this year. Um, We have a public and private session on that 
really important, timely and sad, you know, mm. topic. But so we're in a lot of spaces. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, Cheryl, I just want to say it has been great having you on the show today and really Thank appreciate you. you taking time out of your busy conference schedule because Thanks. I know you are back to back and forth. Yeah. I already saw. So we got Chad to Chad to get you on the show for a couple of minutes. So I really, really appreciate you. you coming on. So thank you. And um, one other thing I'll say is, is to the audience, um, we're going to put all of that information to in the show notes so that you can just really just click on the link, head on over, check out the YouTube channel and also the website and definitely check out the that, that paper as it comes out, the paper one more time was called? It's called Shifting the Retirement Paradigm. Mm-hmm. So we want people to sort of make that shift moving towards lifetime uh, financial security. And so that's going to have a lot of information on thinking about how to uh, analyze your social security, how to come up with a plan, mm-hmm. how to overcome behavioral biases that may keep you from investing, how to even envision your future self better. So i uh, love to have people uh, look at that and it, it can help, I think, everyone personally. So. All right. Perfect. And we'll, again, that will be in the show notes. And uh, Cheryl, really, thanks again for coming on the show. Thank you.